So as you look at this painting from China, I want you to think about the Oxbow, um, Slave Ship, and Hunters in the Snow um, by Bruegel. You know, those Western landscapes we've seen, but in fact, those come way after this particular piece. So this is Travelers Among Mountains and Streams by uh, the Chinese artist Fan Quan. And it is just this huge, uh, grand landscape painting. And it's the only painting that we have of Fan Quan's. So we're going to go ahead on to the next which is context here. This was done in the Northern Song period of Chinese painting. And it was the high point of Chinese painting. And at that time, too, landscape was the highest form of painting in China. Uh, landscape meant more than just what a place looked like. And, you know, that took a long time to get to in Western European art. This was done around year 1000 uh, ACE. So this is about the time period of the Romanesque era. And, you know, where religious art was dominating the European landscape. Uh, here in China, they're using landscape to express something so much more meaningful and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, so our artist was a Taoist recluse. So in, in the Taoist beliefs, you find harmony with nature. And reclusive, he was just, I think, disillusioned with people and the actions of uh, human beings, basically, in general, and sought to find solace, peace, spiritual kind of experience in nature and he expresses those ideas in landscape painting so he's turning to nature for spiritual enlightenment uh, and again he is elevating landscape as a focus and they are in the northern song period long before the west and i don't think really you have that in the west until you get to the romantic era with the oxbow with slave ship and so on uh, so really keep that in mind as a relatable art piece, especially the Oxbow uh, there. I think that definitely would connect with this. Um, one thing in terms of the philosophies around this time where uh, that influence uh, our artist Fan Quan is Neo-Confucianism. And I tried to simplify it as much as possible because it can get pretty complex but basically, it's abstract knowledge or even just like looking at something through the lens of you know, just just looking at it with your eyes and acknowledging it for what it really looks like. That's kind of useless unless you connect that to and 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 also look at it with your own belief system that you reflect and you seek out like a truth about it. And I know that's kind of getting deep thoughts here, but this, you know, just to make it clear, this painting isn't about what he saw, just about what he saw in nature. It's about him looking at something and then going further than that, painting his own thoughts, his own beliefs, his own response to nature. So it's not like I just, oh, I paint what I see like a giotto. It's I'm looking and then I'm processing, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm searching for how it makes me feel and what I think. And then I kind of put those things together. And by painting this, he's revealing his inner truth. And his truth is, is basically, you know, that awe and the beauty and the spirituality that you find in nature and how nature is the dominant force in the world and on earth. And we are merely um, small and, uh, I don't know if I wanna say insignificant, but we are small parts of the entire, the entirety of the world. So first of all, this is a, in terms of content, this is a landscape, clearly, but it's not a pure landscape. 
And I put close-ups here and not the entirety of the image, just so you could see, because it's so difficult to see um, the evidence of people. So if you look at the top image in on the right, right under the trees, you can see some mules. And there are people there as well with the mules with firewood. So there are people in this image, but again, they are such a small, it's like the Thomas Cole and the Oxbow and the people, they are connected with nature and one with nature. We don't dominate it. We are hopefully working in tandem and connected to it. And then in the lower image on the right of the sky, you can see a temple. So again, this is not a pure landscape where it's just nature. It is man and being one with nature, ideally, or I, idealistically, you know, looking at nature and man as being one. Uh, the mountain dominates the scene, and I'll go back to the main image. And again, middle, you can see the temple rooftops. You can see mules and the path where they walk. Uh, there's going to be a stream of water with the mountain connecting like the top to the bottom of the image. And what he is known for, our artist is known for, is using jagged brush strokes, for sure. And you can see that in the trees. And he also kind of changes up his brush strokes for the different trees, you know, showcasing the differences in you know, natural phenomenon with his brush strokes. And when he wants to create mist or some kind of like uh, shading, he'll do what's called an ink wash where you're taking the ink that you're using to paint with and you um, apply some water to it. So it's almost like a watercolor, but with, not with paint, but with ink. And that creates that sense of mist. He uses dots to create texture. I mean, he's so skilled at modeling and of creating these beautiful like rocks and natural phenomenon and showing the differences between them by varying his brush strokes and varying his the way he applies the ink. Um, the other thing again that I'll get to and I'll, I'll show you the image uh, once more is that your three spaces at the top, the middle and the bottom are separated by an empty or like negative space. And so it's 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 not a, like connecting all the landscape together at one time. There seems to be a, an effort on the artist's part to make you consider each section of the landscape separately. So maybe that encourages you to do what he did. It's like, look at this, feel, think, you know, use what you believe and then connect it to what you're seeing and come up with your own truth. Uh, and I'd also, I think, by creating that space between, uh, you are emphasizing depth and great height. And then, you know, with the mountains that are gonna dominate the landscape scene, it definitely showcases the power of nature, the way the sublime, right, of nature. Because the people are so small, so you're emphasizing that power and the enormity of nature and the importance of nature as a spiritual connector, a spiritual tool. And so there you can see it here, the top, probably like three quarters of this painting is the mountain. And then you can see the stream coming down from that mountain on the right. And then you have this space, like this misty kind of space. And then you have the second section where all the trees are and the hills and the temple. And then a space where the path is, where the donkeys or the mules are, the people, and then the rocks in the foreground. So you take them individually. It's almost like you start at the bottom, kind of initiates you into thinking about nature get to the middle section and it's more involved, more natural phenomenon, and then stop, consider, think, feel, and then the mountains, that overwhelming sense of mountains, it just makes this feel that people are so, and I don't know if in, I don't know if insignificant is the right term, but in the face of nature and the power of nature, Yes, I think so. Uh, and then the signatures on the right, uh, and then you just have this really amazing spiritual landscape art piece. 
Uh, and so that's what you typically will have in Northern Song period are these landscape pieces that mean so much more than here's a here's a place, you know, and this is what it looks like. It's it's a much more spiritual journey. And I think that's what he had in mind as you look at the painting as well. So I think, you know, there's so many things you could use here <coughs> for formal qualities. You could do space because, again, you kind of separate this with the empty spaces to make you consider the, <coughs> excuse me, varying areas. Uh, and, and they have greater impact because you have to can stop and consider them separately. Um, you could also do value, you know, the light, dark contrast create this really beautiful, more um, realistic you know, landscape, mystical too landscape, where you've got this misty areas of light ink wash and then the darker areas that helps create sense of depth as well, the value changes and that modeling that he does. Function here, I think spiritual, you can't not use, you know, spiritual with a landscape like this. And then also, of course, landscape, but remember, not a pure landscape. So again, this is um, Fan Quan, his really magnificent and monumental, very big uh, landscape piece, Travelers Among Mountains and Streams from China. Uh, and again, remember to connect this to, I think, the Romantic period of the West, although this piece came far earlier than that, using landscape to express something much more deep and meaningful. <clears throat>